Hello, citizens. Welcome to another episode of an avionics technician's guide. My professional experience between the MV-22 Osprey and now the 737 at the Boeing Company has made me enjoy analyzing ships within the verse. If this is your first time watching my content, then welcome. I am Sir 6. I have been watching this game since the beginning, and I have been backing since 2014. And now, I create content that is more than just stating facts. My content is intended to help people like you figure out what role you want to play, and if the ship in question really fits the niche that you desire. I analyze everything and put things into perspective, all in all to make you think. Feedback is always appreciated, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this series, tell me what ship you would like to see next, and check out other videos within this series or within my channel. Now without further chatter, let us analyze the ship in full detail, the Razor LX. Today we'll start off with a pre-flight walk around, examining the weapons package and exterior of the ship, reviewing the flight deck, analyzing components and flight performance, and wrapping up the video with my final thoughts on the ship. Let's begin. The Razor LX is of course the racer variant of the Razor series. Designed and manufactured by MISC, who is known for ships like the Freelancer, to the whole series, and now offering an alternative to a ship like the M50. The ship itself was intended for pure performance over everything small, nimble, and has some defenses if you get into trouble. Let's get a closer look and discuss the ship as we start our pre-flight walk around. I'll see you on the ground. Starting off our walk around, to the front of the ship we have canards on either side of the ship, helping maneuverability and providing airflow. Under the nose we have the nose landing gear, and all three are skids and the main landing gear are canted. At the top of the ship you'll notice some vortex generators. They're most often used for delay flow separation. Next we have a tiny wing-like structure. To me it seems like an air scoop that directs air into the engine intake just after the structure. And just below is the weapon system. The Razor carries two fixed M4A laser cannons to help you eliminate opponents while in the competition. To the aft end of the ship we have the unique wing-like structure, configured in an X-wing, acting like both horizontal and vertical stabilizers, all with winglets to reduce the wingtip vortices. And at the back we have the two powerful engines. Now with our walk around complete, let's take a look at the inside of the ship. Once at the controls, at the left you have the unlock, lock, open, close, exterior switch, and at the crotch you have the ejection seat. Above is the cycle power and go flight ready button, and to the right is the spool quantum drive and engine switches. The Razor has three MFDs and a radar screen right in the middle. Now with our flight deck analysis complete, let's take her for a spin. I'll see you in the air. Flight performance overall is okay, in space. On a planet or a moon, not so much. This thing is a lawn dart really. The higher the speed, the less maneuverability you have. And yes, all ships should function this way, but this ship becomes unstable at some speeds. The ship will not want to turn at all, and if you pitch your nose too much, the ship will violently oscillate up and down until you bleed off some speed. Optimal speed for me, where I have full control, is just below the SCM line, any higher and things become a little unstable. In space though, it takes about 17.17 seconds to hit max speed without afterburners, but of course the ship has a high max speed, so it takes a bit longer just to get there, and about 13.06 seconds with afterburners. But afterburners are not consistent because you overheat, so you have to use short bursts. Now looking at the components that make up the ship, the Razor comes with a civilian Class C Quantum Drive. This is okay. It also has two Ice Plunge Grade C Competition Class coolers, a Sunflare Grade C Competition Class power plant, and the Razor LX apparently comes with three Targa Grade C Competition Class shield generators. I don't know if this was an error or if this is just meant to be, but within the ship customization, you have three shield generators, which is very interesting. But anyways, to learn more about ship components, 
feel free to check out my video on ship components themselves. I'm pretty sure it will help you a lot. Now, as for my own thoughts on the ship, with the analysis we just went through, I believe this can be a decent racing ship. I personally wouldn't change out any components honestly because I'm not using it for PvP. I want the most performance out of the racer. However, once Grade A components are seen more frequently, along with insurance to protect your in-game purchases, I could end up picking one of these in the future. Only time will tell. However, I'm not a racer, and I don't think this ship will be good for stars because there are other affordable options out there. I don't see many people shelling out $100 on a ship that is very role specific like a racer. But hey, it's your journey overall, so if this is the ship that you want, then by all means, get the ship that you want. As always, I thank you for spending your time with me. And if you enjoyed this video and got something out of it, then I ask you to consider clicking that like button and sharing it with fellow backers so they can make a decision on the role playing style. And feel free to subscribe for more content if you are new to my channel. But until next time, fellow citizens, I will see you on the flip side.